Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with episode 23, part one of my golf vlog series. This time featuring the front nine of the Fozzie course at Ponghorn Resort. If you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, I'm super excited to announce that my merchandise store has finally launched. I'll put the link to my store in the description below so you guys can check out everything that's up there. If you don't see something there that you think should be there let me know as we will be continuing to add more things to the store in the coming weeks and as i figure more things out about the merchandise stuff i'll be able to get more opt more optimize everything a little bit better so just bear with me on that but i hope you guys enjoy the merchandise it's definitely been a process but i'm sure it'll be worth it in the end so yeah i'm very excited about that with that being said let's hop into the video so this was actually filmed a bit ago um, while I was still out on the West Coast, and just but I thought this would definitely be a great video to come out with now. And um, this is really a fun course to play. Pronghorn is ball goes really far out here, and uh, it's a really great golf course, really great place to stay. A lot of great people there, and <clears throat> it probably goes like six to seven percent further out out here than it does in a typical sea level climate. So it's a lot of fun to play golf there. And you can see a nice little stinger there. And only carried like 211 yards, but that had almost an 80-yard roll on it. <clears throat> and that just goes to show how important it is to keep it under the wind. Because you can really scoot it along a fairway really, fairway really nicely. If Because if you have a headwind and you hit it too high, what's going to happen is not only will it go shorter, but the landing angle will be steep and won't go anywhere. But if you actually flight it under the wind and you get it to the point where it's so low that the wind doesn't touch it. It might not carry as far, but it will roll further than if you hit it higher up. So it may be obvious, but I think sometimes people don't actually realize that. And um, it's important to understand those things when you're trying to play in wind because it gets windy out of pronghorn. And so it's definitely something you need to keep the ball down as much as possible. And it definitely something that gave me a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, fuss as well. Because <clears throat> I've always, as you guys know, I've always struggled in the wind. And so getting to play these courses has been a very good challenge. And it's made me a lot better as a golfer. And so I really do think these these vlogs help me improve. And we'll see, you know, if, if I um, can keep making marginal improvements, I, I mean, I might give pro golf a shot. But not if I miss putts like that. <laughs> so I think I'm level through the first two. And on hole three, par four. 468 yards and sound up. Again, this is dead into the teeth. I remember this hole being a really tough hole because, like, the I played this course like probably four or five times, and every single time it was right into the wind. So that was definitely something that made this a pretty tough hole. You can see the trees there, how much the wind's howling. <clears throat> so I got 182 yards left here, and I'm putting a nine iron into the screen. And it was definitely, it was a blind shot. And, you know, one of the things that is good about hitting it into the rough is it actually makes it easier to play into a headwind. Uh, because this, since the ball doesn't spin, it can cut through the wind a little better. And the spin actually, the the wind actually acts as a natural backdrop. For, I mean, a backstop, rather, for the shot. So typically, if you have a ball that's a flyer and it's coming out hot, you know, you, you want it to stop quicker. And hitting into a headwind, the wind really knocks it down. So it's a nice marriage there. However, if it's downwind out of the rough, that is when it's tough. So you, got to, you just got to kind of ma manage yourself a little better when you're hitting in those conditions. And here, once again, <clears throat> choking down the club, trying to cut it through the wind. Blood this one out to the right a little bit, but I don't think I was in too much trouble here. Just had a pretty simple bunker shot. So nothing too crazy, and you can see here, I actually almost made it. I thought for a second that I was going to get some wheels and roll into the hole. That would have been a nice little birdie there. But I'll settle for a par. So not a bad start, because this is a really hard course. Um, I mean, really, like this is actually not an easy course at all. So it's definitely not a bad score. And this one was going a little bit left, and this fairway is huge, and uh, this is definitely a very unforced error on my part, because you'll see where I am here. I'm, I really have to hit a pretty interesting shot, 
So the, I don't know if you can see the pin, but I have to play this crazy rope hook from 130 yards away. And, you know, when you hit it as far as I do, and then you just turn the club face over, you're going to hit it even further. So I really had to do everything I could to swing as short as possible here. And you'll see this ball turn over. And I t this was right at the pin. However, you know, I just it just had too much gas on it. And you'll see where I end up here in a second. I mean, you can kind of see from, I mean, that was right on top of it. And it just, it went a little too far. And this one caught a little too much ball. And these greens are, Pronghorn's greens roll at about 10 and a half to 11. So these are some pretty quick greens. So you really have to be on top of your stuff when you're playing this course. So I got about 15, 20 feet here to safe par. And pulled it just a bit, and that was the difference. I think I had the line perfect. I just uh, pulled it a little bit left. So dropped my first shot of the day there. Now in hole six, par four, 423 yards. This is one we just want to get it over that fairway bunker out there. And great swing here. Probably one of my best swings of the day. Absolutely nutted this one. And you can see <laughs> 320 yards of carry almost. Because I wasn't trying to hit it low, I was trying to hit it a little bit higher. And when I'm, you know, when I'm not trying to hit my stinger, I can get a little more extra speed out of it because I'm releasing the hands a bit better. So that's why I went a lot further. But perfect position here. And I hit a really terrible shot. Um, I, I got a little. I think I thought the wind would pull it in a little more than it did and hit it long left and that was not a good miss because this gives a very slippery green and it runs away from you so you can see I, I mean I hit a pretty good shot here checked up but I think if it went maybe one foot further that would have gone down a tap in distance but I just put myself in a really bad spot you just can't do that from 92 yards out so now I have about a six or seven foot swinger with some wind to contend with here and I that one hurt. I mean, I, I still remember how... I mean, that was a putt I thought I had. I didn't think it would snap that much at the last second, but dropped another shot. And that's probably from that lob wedge I hit for sure. And now here, again, this is probably the hardest hole in the course. There's really... You can hit driver here, but the, 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 um, the hole narrows after about 300. Like I mean, once you get to that bunker, you can see how narrow the fairway gets, and it's just not worth it to get it another 50 yards up. Um, and so, I'm okay with a 200-yard shot in. You just got to choke down the club, and you know it's into the wind here. So I'm just trying to flight it through as best I can. And when I hit this shot, I the wind just died, and I knew the spin was way too low, and I knew this was gonna fly over the green. <laughs> so. I was a little annoyed because I hit a really good shot right at the pin, and you can see I'm I'm a bit long, so just trying to scramble and get up and down here. And a four is definitely a good score on this hole for sure. And yep, <laughs> having some trouble getting acclimated to the greens. I thought this one was actually going to go in for a second, but it raced by pretty good. So now I got another you know 10, 12 footer for par, trying to make it up this slope. And once again, I pulled it. And those last two putts, if I started them on the right line, they would have. They, I really think they both would have been in. This was definitely. This was back when I was having some trouble pulling putts. I still do, but I've worked on it a lot since then. And so I'm, I think, you know, I don't think it will happen as much as it used to. And we'll see. You know, if I can keep making marginal improvements here and there, and um, I get some opportunities in next year. I mean, it would be really, really cool if I would be in a position where I could, my game is good enough to even be somewhat competitive on a tour level. I don't know if it'll ever get there. But, you know, between long drive and golf, my situation right now, because long drive's kind of having some trouble, is I'm trying to put long drive videos up on this channel from tournaments. But basically, when I'm preparing for long drive events, I do my long drive practice, and then I'll do a session in the morning and a session at night. And in between those sessions... Um, I do my I do golf practice, and I'm able to practice hitting balls like two hours, three hours a day. Um, work on short game as well, and uh, you know get out there and try to play for these vlogs. So it's been a really good combination, and we'll see if it's successful. So oh, by the way, sound up here. 
this is such a fun hole. This was I, this could be one of the longest holes in the state at 676 yards. It plays downwind, and you know it's 5,000 feet of elevation, and so the ball go far. So that was over 400 yards. I think it was like a 420 yard drive according to track man. So you, know, you can t you can see uh, only a six iron left, and uh, I pulled this one a bit. <laughs> And uh, yeah, cooked a little bit too much, and so I have about a 20-yard chip here, just trying to get it on the front edge of the green, because this was a really tough shot, pretty thick rough, and just trying to get it on the front, just let it roll over a bit. And I thought this was going to get a little bit further up, but it did, and did just get caught up on the edge of the fringe. So that was a little disappointing, but I mean, once it gets over that fringe, it pretty much rolls right on top of the hole. A little bit conservative, but I do have a putt to shoot 39 in the front. And uh, just snapped a little bit too much. And I uh, got a little bit of meat left on that bone, so <laughs> I just kind of walked up on like, screw this. Um, and uh, I did knock it in, so I shot a 40. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.